Great. All right. So, um, you are University of Melbourne. Yeah. I, as you saw, I was there not that long ago. At or, uh, the university or, there. No, I wasn't. No, I was not at the university. <laughs> that is that is true. Um, before the pandemic, there was a uh, you saw there was a mobile app that contacted me, and they said, mm. "Hey, come down." Okay. Yeah, sports bet. Well, yeah. I didn't. I did not realize until I got down there that um, online gambling was very legal in Australia. <laughs> it's extremely legal there. Yes. And it's. I know. I know. It's also. I saw some of the posters. It's also a problem. At the same time, mm -hmm. because when you legalize gambling, of course, you're going to get the problems that that go along with it. But uh, but yeah, sports bet. They treated me very nicely, so I have nothing to complain about there. That's great. All right. So what paper? What are you doing for this? I've, I've done a number of university things over the years. Uh, this is in your yeah. this is for journalism. Yes. Yes, that's right. Um, it's a multimedia project. Yes. And we're focusing on how new media has changed non-conventional beliefs. Yeah. So because I guess they've existed for a really long time, right? But with the help of social media, they have spread really rapidly. Yes. Um. So, yeah, we want to look at that. And I feel like Flat Earth is probably the biggest conspiracy of all. So Good. I, I was, in fact, I was going to ask you why, why you chose Flat Earth out of all the things in, in social media, just because you, you've seen it. I mean, you're young. So, mm -hmm. and it's been, I've been doing this now for nine years. Mm -hmm. So, um, where where did you first run into it? Um, or did I you just kind of pick it, throw a dart at a wall, and and no, no, no. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I don't know. I think even in like pop culture, it's always brought up, right? Like the portrayal of flat earthers, like yep. dumb and ignorant, and blah blah blah. Yep. Um, but I think it's definitely popped up a lot more in the past five years and it's definitely on my radar now well, um it's a, so it's a group project as well and then one of my teammates I think she was telling me that she watches flat earth videos at night before she sleeps or like to help her fall asleep <laughs> nice I mean, yeah. there's a lot. I mean, again, we've been doing this. I mean, I'm one of the oldest ones in this, and I've been doing it for nine years. But there is a lot. I mean, you've seen it. There's a lot of content out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of content. So, yeah, wouldn't surprise me. Uh, I mean, the average person that gets into it watches, what, 20 videos in a row? <laughs> and that's nuts in itself to where YouTube pro was promoting. Well, we might as well get into some of the questions, but I'll, I'll give you some some background really <laughs> quick, which is, when we first got into this back in 2015, YouTube was still fairly young compared mm -hmm. to a lot of things. And they were looking, again, they're they're no different than any, any other network. I mean, yeah, there's Netflix and Disney Plus and crap like that. But I mean, let's face it, YouTube is the biggest network in the world. They have mm -hmm. lifetimes worth of content. You could, you could spend 100 lifetimes and never even scratch the surface on what's out there on YouTube. And they were looking for a binge topic. And then all of a sudden we showed up on their radar and they realized when they were doing the metrics on us, you know, the analytics that, that and that they weren't kidding that the average person that first gets into flat earth watches 20 videos in a row. That's a lot, right. For, you know, for, and so that's like, Oh wow, we found our binge topic. We found our binge show. So let's just start promoting it. And they promoted us just shamelessly for the first three years, from 2015 all the way through the summer of 2018. We were recommended mm -hmm. constantly. And I've got a playlist I can I can send you, which would actually be pretty good for social media, because I was following the scoreboard, you know, the 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 metrics on it. I was I was punching them up and, and putting it on the display in, in YouTube. And when we passed Donald Trump when he was president in 2018 that's when they took their foot off the gas because we had saturated the the market and we've been fighting them ever since but it's been still been a lot of fun anyway so sorry that was my that's my opening shot mm -hmm. hit me i know you probably got a list of questions or whatever i've, I've got no time limits so whatever you want to okay. hit me with okay oh um i just thought of this right now but yeah. 
why do you think so there are so many conspiracies yeah but why do you think that flat earth is the most popular like well on okay one because it is the one it's one of the oldest conspiracies to be sure mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it's been around for a long, long time. I mean, we could rattle off any other conspiracy. Okay, there's a couple of reasons. One, it's the oldest conspiracy. Two, it's one of the few conspiracies that mankind didn't invent. Meaning, if you believe in flat Earth, then you believe this place. You're you're living in a building, a soundstage, right? Uh, um, uh, Hollywood studio, and that predates us. Every other conspiracy, with the exception of really flat Earth, was was done by us and we are hiding our secret because we created it with flat earth we were born into this and all we're doing is trying to keep it a secret right and so man didn't man didn't create the conspiracy of, of flat earth um the other reason why it's it's there's two more reasons i'll give you one it's one of the few things we debunk to children meaning and, and i don't want to rattle off too many i mean you most of the great conspiracies are American. You know, we'll, I'll just use the generic ones like, you know, the moon landing, Pearl Harbor, uh, the Titanic, uh, JFK, and so on and so on, right? Mm -hmm. Those are, wait, how did I start that one with? The, uh, hang on one second. I lost my train of thought for one, one second. I think that it's the one that we debunk to children. Oh, yeah, debunk to children. Yeah, but we don't tell children in first grade any of that stuff. We don't care. You're not going to tell children about Pearl Harbor, right? but you absolutely it's a, but they you you bet they open us oh yeah by the way we used to think it was flat now it's a globe here it is it's going to sit in the corner of the classroom and that's all you have to say you never have to revisit it in any other grade and you can go like in like in the united states you go through 12 years of school that globe's still in the corner of your classroom in most of them right below the flag and that's a really powerful conditioning tool to it leads me up to the last point, which is why is it so popular, is that because of that conditioning, when anyone even brings it up on social media, it's a bar fight because all of a sudden people are, you know, it's it's it is the most polarizing thing. And most people don't know why they get so upset about it. So the camps, no one I, I, I've hardly ever run into a person that they, they were like, oh, flat earth, yeah, take it or leave it. You're either you believe in science. And if you believe in flat earth, you're an idiot or flat earth is the way and the truth. And all science people are, are, you know, if you're not with us, you're against us. Right. And there's, there's no middle ground there. And I mean, seriously, I've seen that there's a reason why, and I, I don't exaggerate much when I, when it comes to this, we have a 99% retention rate, meaning once you flip over to our side, you don't flip back. And I mean, yeah, there's a, there are a few isolated cases, but that's more than organized religion. And you know how, how heated that can get, right? You know, get some, get some Christians and Muslims into a room together and see what happens, right? It's, it's not pretty, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, wars have started for less. And so between all those things, I mean, it's the perfect storm for social media to where, mm -hmm. hey, come on, the, any, any platform, I don't care if it's BitChute or Brideon or Rumble, but definitely YouTube because they're the biggest. I mean, YouTube wants everyone to debate stuff in the comment section. And once the first two big channels, all the big channels monitor the metrics, they see what's hot or not, kind of like you. You don't want to see what's happening out there. And once they saw, it's like, oh no, not only if you do a flat earth video or you can get more hits and thumbs up or thumbs down, now thumbs down are gone, of course. <laughs> but the comment section is going to explode. And it did. I mean, the the comments would be something along the lines of seven, eight hundred percent more than normal when you do a flat earth video because people can't help themselves. They are going to chime in. And not only that, it's not just generic comments like you get on um on uh, some of the the picture things, uh, not Instagram, but uh, oh, ah, some of the 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 online image uploads where it's like oh pretty picture oh pretty you know or beautiful song or whatever right something really generic oh no people will write freaking essays in the comment sections they will max that stuff out constantly and uh, to where we have dedicated trolls that that have created huge channels how mm -hmm. just going against us i mean how does that happen right it's you know why why would they care and and now granted a lot of those are younger people that are just going after the click i call them click chasers 
because social media is all about the numbers. And we can talk about that a little bit, you know, which, by the way, if you've ever, uh, some things I want to recommend to you, if you're getting, if you really get it, gotten into this, because this was made a few years ago, have you ever seen the documentary? Um, uh, well, I mean, not the, the social, social dilemma. That's pretty good. If you've never seen the social dilemma, that's awesome. But you have you seen fake famous? No. Watch it. I will okay. send you, I will send you the link after this. Watch fake famous. It is about how credibility now, media credibility is now inherently tied to social media, meaning mm. kids don't care about CNN and MSNBC and Fox News and stuff. All they care about is hits and likes and numbers. It's like, oh, no, PewDiePie is legit because he's got 100 million subs. It's like, is he? Really? Yeah. Why? Just because. And and by the way, you can buy. Also, look up things like um uh look up things like in-game currency. Do you know what in-game currency is? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. Perfect. So like what you know in Warcraft, this Warcraft has practically invented it, right? Warcraft gold is Warcraft gold, and it can only be used in Warcraft gold. And Americans will buy it all day long because they're lazy gamers, right? Yeah. Americans are terrible. And look, I was a professional gamer. I'm telling you, they're really lazy. They're the worst people. If you can sell it to the Americans, that's the whole thing. You, you'll make a ton of money. And then all of a sudden, somebody came up with the idea. It's like, wait a minute. What's the difference between mining Warcraft gold and selling it to the Americans or mining likes and hits and subs in a social media platform and selling it to the Americans? Nothing. As a matter of fact, it's actually easier <laughs> than, than going into a game and mining gold. You can just because I mean, it's repetitive and it's I'm probably I'm sure it's even more boring. But the Americans would buy it, and to where now we've got kids that are spending. You'll 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 see. I'll, sorry, let me throw out one more line really fast from the movie, and I'll send you the link to the movie from IMDb. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely a must watch for anyone in your position. Um, the the one of the guys in the I think it was the director. He he made the statement. He goes, "You realize there are millions of kids out there with at least a hundred thousand Instagram followers." He goes, well, "There's only like ten thousand famous people in the world at any given time." Who are all these people, right? And it's they're nobody. They're just people that buy hits and likes. And no offense if you've ever bought any, but they buy them because look, they want to keep up with their friends. The peer pressure, it's like you're no one unless you have 10,000 Instagram followers. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. And but if you buy them and it's like, okay, and you know that everyone else is buying them, is the credibility still there? Well, the illusion is. Anyway, sorry. There you go. Sorry, my long-winded answer to why it's popular. There you go. Okay. Um. So you said between 2015 to 2018, YouTube yeah. was mostly promoting Fada content. Yeah. So, um, is that is that the algorithm thing? So if you, even if you hadn't watched a flat up video, they yeah. would suggest it. Yeah. The one of the one of the programmers, he was French. Um, a lot of people don't know this. The and you'll see it in Social Dilemma outtakes. The Social Dilemma is another documentary which is absolutely outstanding, where they were talking about how Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and, and were like Twitter were formed, how they were created. Mm -hmm. And they they were asking, how do things get recommended for you in YouTube? It only came down to one guy. He was French. Mm -hmm. And he wrote this algorithm, which was basically looking for binge topics. Okay. And so what was happening was, no matter what you searched for in YouTube, Oh, yeah, you'd get, you know, you're looking up, I don't know, uh, uh, famous figure skaters, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, seven out of the 10 things on the side would be famous figure sta skaters, right? But three of them, for some apparent reason, would be flat earth videos, mm -hmm. right? Down towards the bottom. And you might think, oh, that's kind of strange. And then you'd click on one of them. If you have autoplay turned on, you know, where it rolls over to the next video, mm -hmm. you'd be watching a video. And I'll send you a link to like, well, I'll, I'll explain that in a second where it'll autoplay it'll be like, oh figure skater figure skater and then all of a sudden for no apparent reason your next video that starts playing will be a flat earth video and they're just playing the odds which is well there's lots of people searching for flat earth and this is our binge topic this is what we're going with and so they kept doing that too i remember there was this guy i think it was 2017 or could have been the, the beginning of 2018 you can you can make videos i don't know if you've ever seen it where people ask for help on on it's like Hey, you know, they make a video. It's like, help me install my engine in my old car. Right. Mm -hmm. And some guy said, help me turn off recommendations 
on the side. And he happened to bring us up. He goes, he goes, for some reason, I don't know why, because I like working out and I don't like messing with my settings. These flat earth videos keep popping up in my autoplay. He goes, and I keep saying, no, don't want, don't want, don't want. And it keeps ignoring me. Why is this? And it really was bugging the hell out of him. And uh, yeah, that's that's how we kept started showing up. Again, They, when I say, I wasn't kidding when I said the word shamelessly, they were promoting us all the time to where when we, when we were monetized heavily, we were doing really well, actually. We were, we were actually making some decent change for flat earth videos. And then there was a Senate hearing in 2018, government hearing, where they were trying to, they are, oh, they, okay, we're going to start cracking down on some stuff. We're going to crack down. False flags are banned. Snake oil or medical misinformation is banned. Uh, you can't talk about the 2020 American election. That's banned. It's now been revoked. And then they threw this thing at the end. They only taught, brought up four topics. At the end, they said, oh, yeah, we're going to recommend flat earth less. And the, the politicians are like, where did that come from? It's like, why, why would you even be talking about flat earth? Right? They couldn't, they didn't even believe it was a topic. And then, of course, the the it, it all exploded because the Netflix documentary. Oh, did I ever send you the Netflix documentary link? Is that the one behind Is the that... curve? I haven't seen it, but I've heard about it. Yeah, why? Yeah, that then that came out, and mm -hmm. then it became to where I was a little surprised when you called me out of the blue because I've talked to I lost count of how many universities where it's on the syllabus. In different classes, everything from psychology to sociology to science classes and alternative thinking. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Behind behind the curves required viewing now on a lot. Oh. Of, and so when Netflix came out again, adding to social media, now it became mainstream to where people like you and mainstream uh, mainstream journalists was like, oh, I don't have to even contact an actual look up a flat earther. I can just watch the freaking documentary and comment on that. <laughs> and then we were just everywhere. I mean, I knew literally, I mean, everybody else bought it before Netflix picked it up. And I knew because I woke up one morning and my email load, which was already pretty big, literally doubled overnight mm -hmm. to where, I mean, it was like, and I was like messaging people. It's like, has, did some, what happened recently? <laughs> and they, they said, oh dude, it's on Netflix. It's like, oh God. <laughs> Oh no, it's really bad. And uh, because we didn't honestly, nobody thought that it was going to get picked up. Uh, the director, the producers, nobody. I mean, they didn't even think we'd get into film festivals, and we got into every film festival that, that they applied to. And uh, yeah, so there you go. So okay. I don't know what that question um, started off with, but go ahead. <laughs> so after um, twenty eighteen, they stopped recommending flat Earth videos, right? Right. And they, um, and then when did they put that, um, like that Wikipedia thing below? Oh, 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 thank you for bringing that up. Yes. When did they pick up? When did they do the Wikipedia entry? Good point, by the way. I know I'm blinding because I'm, hang on, I gotta send you. <laughs> uh, so I gotta, I gotta do links for you. Fake famous, uh, guy who wanted, I'm just giving you topics, uh, mm -hmm. to turn off reco recommendations and uh maybe i'll bring up senate hearing and i'll i'll say um behind the curve in fact i'm thinking of actually this week doing a uh finally i may run into some copyright issues the um i'm, I'm thinking of doing a cast member commentary you know because they can do like director's commentaries for movies oh yeah and, I, and I'm, I, i've never done a cast member's commentary but I know more about that movie than almost everyone, except for maybe the director. Okay. So anyway, um, so the wicked thing happened during the government intervention. So mm -hmm. not only it was a it. So not only did they recommend us less, and by that meaning they recommended us seventy percent less than normal. We know almost exactly how much they recommended us less because we were making seventy percent less money right after mm -hmm. the government stepped in. But then they all of a sudden they said, oh, and we're going to add a line underneath certain videos that are tied directly to Wiki and only Wiki. Mm -hmm. So we were the first ones, which was if you make a flat earth video and you can do it yourself if you want, you make a flat earth video and it's not anti flat earth in, in strong enough or you or even if you say flat earth enough times during the video, 
all mm -hmm. of a sudden you will now get a banner, a clickable banner underneath the video that's tied. And it'll say Wikipedia, flat earth. And, and they're encouraging people to go to it where Wiki says, well, flat earth is ancient and outdated and no one should ever look it up. And science has absolutely disproved this. We were the first topic. And then they went after uh, different things. You know, there's, there's only a handful out there, the Wiki. But yeah, the reason why you see Wiki entries. Yeah, that's us. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay. Um, so after, I guess, they changed the algorithm and stopped recommending Flat Earth, yeah. um, do you think, I guess, I don't know, would you call yourself like a Flat Earth influencer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, been, <laughs> I've been called a lot of things. In the documentary, they called me the king of Flat Earth, and that was just hype. I'm not, I'm not the king of anything. It's just silly. Or the mayor of Flat Earth or whatever, or one of the originators. Although the, the guy that really got me going was a, a Canadian guy from Montreal um, named Matt Boylan. He's in the documentary. Mm -hmm. um, I like to call myself the, the recruiter of Flat okay. Earth, a Flat Earth recruiter. I mean, technically, from a technical standpoint, yes, you're absolutely right. I'm a Flat Earth influencer. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's the category I fall into. Uh, but I am I am... From a university standpoint, you'll totally understand this. I would be the freshman recruiter. <laughs> I'm the guy that walk does the tour guide, you know, mm -hmm. through the university before your first day. Okay. You know, before your or or I might be part of your orientation, but generally mm -hmm. I give it off to somebody else. But I'm the guy. It's like okay, in this building over here, we're doing uh, experiments over here. We're just doing general content over here. We're attacking NASA. There's music there's uh, live debates and so on and so on. We've got all these different categories. And we we practically, I came up, I didn't coin the term, but Flat Earth University, yeah, came through some of my stuff because because our, our, our aspects are so broad that we could almost open up. But our, our university is strictly metaphorical. Mm. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a recruiter. Okay. So after YouTube, yeah. Did you guys move to other platforms or? Yeah, had how? to, had to, uh, mostly because we were worried. Okay. A couple of reasons there. One is flat earthers have a hard time sticking to just flat earth because deep down we're conspiracy people, right? It's not just flat earth we believe in, <laughs> we, but if you want to play it safe, you stick with flat earth because flat earth, all other conspiracies are considered dark and sinister and you know people whisper behind closed doors and you know dim the lights right that sort of thing it's like we maybe we'll overthrow the government no flat earthers are, are very nice in fact there's um the conferences are just a, a big party it's absolutely wonderful um and surprising amount of women in flat earth you know normal conspiracies are almost like 90 10 men to women but in flat earth like the last conferences i've been going to it's been like 60 40 which is awesome. And and I ask, I ask women, like, why are you here? Right? Conspiracies aren't, aren't you know, kind of like gaming. It's like girls don't game. You know, why girls don't conspiracy. What are you doing here? And uh, they they all say the same thing. It's like, well, it's um, Flat Earth is kind of a message of hope. There's nothing really dark about it. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's because it wasn't created by us. The the motivation behind it, behind it isn't man-made. So it, they, they literally say it's a message of hope. Uh, it, it gives, you know, purpose to the universe and, and stuff like that. What was the initial question there? Oh, oh, oh. other plat other platforms. So yeah, after that, we, any platform that came out, we immediately hit it with everything we had. And then turns out because now with your generation and the generation that's coming up behind you, mm -hmm. who are really social media oriented, you know, they're, they're really going after it. They need stuff to, they need content. And we're one of the few cont uh, 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 ideas that's out there that's not copyrighted in any way. So mm -hmm. we, I, in fact, I don't even, I can't remember the last time even one of our people copyright threw a copyright strike at anybody because it was like, why? We're just trying to get the message out there. And so the kids are like, wait, fr free topic that I could put <laughs> on my channel that'll get me clicks and and it'll you know generate all sorts of interest. Yeah, I'll sign up for that. And so like TikTok's a great example. They yeah. all of a sudden we noticed there were all these kids putting TikTok videos out about flat earth and none of it was original. Oh, I mean, there's most of it was commentary on videos we had already made in YouTube. So then we took those and made compilations of those and put them back on YouTube. 
and then and then it just became cyclical it was awesome so yeah every any we don't even have to try like i only run for example my content on youtube but i know i'm on all sorts every other platform that's out there i'm on i don't know what's i like my wiki page i don't even know who wrote it i uh, my imdb B page i don't know who wrote that either People won't even tell me that it's just, it's just flat earth is one of those things where we kind of volunteer stuff for each other. So it's super fun. There you go. Okay. So, um, currently, yeah. what do you think, which platform do you think flat earth is most popular on apart from TikTok? Uh, well, I know I just hit, I think I hit a million hits on BitChute. I know BitChute's, okay. BitChute's pretty big. Uh, Brideon, Rumble. Things that don't have as much censorship, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but the money's way less. So it's this weird mix because flat earthers like anyone else want to mon like I'm not monetized on on YouTube and I never will be now uh, mm -hmm. because I got cracked during the pandemic. Um, but everything everything else is minor compared to YouTube. I mean, you could stack up like Bri Brideon and Bitchute and Rumble and Odyssey and all this other stuff, and you could combine them all together, and it's still not going to match the numbers of YouTube. YouTube is it's kind of like, and I, this is older than you, but it's kind of like eBay was back in the day. When mm -hmm. eBay came out, it was huge. And even now, it's like if you're going to sell some random miscellaneous thing, you're probably going to sell it on eBay because there was no one else to, what, who's going to compete? Once you're established, once you've dominated, you it's tough to break in. Sort of like why the, why all the lawsuits are happening against uh, iPhones right now. Because Apple's just mercilessly marketed people. It's like, it's cool. It, you know, every kid, every, every kid group of kids that coming in, it's like, get an iPhone. It's cool. And all the kids like, it's cool. Right. And it, the marketing got so bad that other, what, what other phones even break in Android, whatever. <laughs> all right. What else we got? Um, so do you think the flat earth movement is, still going oh, rapidly God, yes. oh yeah yeah the only thing i'll, I'll give you uh, two quick examples um 2019 before the pandemic hit we had done conferences i think in like seven or eight countries right? mm -hmm. and i was in most of those and which was amazing right we were doing international travel so not only i mean we really broke out in the us and then uk and then europe and I know there were other things in non-English speaking countries, but since most like Americans, they don't even know a second language, we didn't even know what they were. So you want to have fun, type in flat earth, convert it to another language, whatever it is, and then pump that back into, into Google and see what happens. It's amazing. I mean, there's whole, there's whole countries out there that they're doing flat earth stuff that we, we can't break into. Um, then the pandemic hit and I know like, for example, I had just gotten back, I'll, I'll so I'll tell you really quick. So I did a conference in London, came back, uh, went back over for a morning talk show, came back, was going to go over a third time. And this was just, I, I wasn't even worried. It was like, oh yeah, we're crushing it, right? Going back for a McDonald's commercial and because they want to do pancake day, you know, because pancakes are round and flat and they were going to superimpose yeah. a flat. Yeah, it's going to, yeah, it was a very nice idea. It's like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. I mean, why not? I did that freaking mobile commercial. And <laughs> then the next thing you know, I remember uh, your passport's ready. It's like, oh, yeah, bring a friend. It'll be awesome. And then all of a sudden I got a phone call because I was it was supposed to kick off in March of 2020. And then all of a sudden they said, yeah, the border's closed. You can't go. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we don't even know when the border is going to reopen. So that slowed us. It slowed us down because now we couldn't do international conferences for a while. But, it, but like we just did the Vegas conference um, uh, last fall and we brought in people from England which was awesome so I mean that was the first time that we we finally got to mix and match but what it did was and you know this probably it put people indoors for a longer period of time than they probably should have been and people mm -hmm. ran out of streaming things to watch mm -hmm. so they started going down rabbit holes on like YouTube and other social media platforms and why not? I mean, it's like how many, I mean, I ran out, I was running out of things to watch and I had a lot of access to all sorts of stuff. And that was me. Imagine the average person that's like, well, Netflix is tapped out. What else is there? And, and also you're inside where people are recommending things to you. It's like, dude, have you seen this YouTube video? Dude, have you seen this YouTube video? So all of a sudden behind the curve became popular again because it was on Netflix. 
because even though it had already run the the three year contract on Netflix, and so there were everything was internalized. So no, I, I mean we just kept yeah growing and spreading to where when we were also one of our one of our people, um, Karen B, uh, great uh, woman flat earther, she was doing conferences. She was the only one doing conferences in the world while the pandemic was happening because she she found a venue that didn't care about mandate restrictions down in the eastern part of the United States in South Carolina. And so she was doing conferences and I was going to most of these. And I remember like I'd, I'd open them and I'd say, hey, how many people are new? 80% of the audience every freaking time, but, you know, raise their hands like, wow. You know, so we were just the, the numbers were always there, but because the scoreboard was torn down in 2018 because they were trying to reduce our again i'll send you the links to that uh the pop the popularity you couldn't tell you couldn't tell how big we had gotten you know what i mean because they were hiding the numbers even from us mm -hmm. which was and by the way when i say the scoreboard was was torn down if you go into google and you type in it'll say search results equals a number mm -hmm. Google owns YouTube. So this is, you know, internet search 101. In YouTube, it was search results equals a number. It was there for years and years and years. And then all of a sudden, right after we, you know, we were just rocketing up the charts, they tore down the scoreboard entirely for all topics forever. And they didn't even say why. And I, we knew why. And people say, oh, it's delusional. It's like, hell, it's not delusional. It's like, so that was a brilliant move because when then we stopped, you know, we stopped pointing at the scoreboard because there was no scoreboard. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, crap. Anyway, so yeah, no, we're we're as, we're as, we're bigger now than we ever have been, but the world has changed. So it, we're just in different places now. It's not we're not as public as we used to be because I mean, come on, the mandates we're still recovering from the mandates in, mm -hmm. as far as the restrictions go. I haven't done international travel, for example, since uh, um, beginning of twenty twenty. Okay. So there you go. Okay. Um. So you said you've been doing this for nine years. Yeah. So that's around 2014. Uh, 20, beginning of 2015. So February of 2015. Okay. So, um, yeah, do you know, do you know what the movement was like before social media? Yeah, it was terrible. It was, it was terrible. <laughs> it was, well, it was, no, I can tell you exactly what it was because I was researching it in 2014. So um, in 2014, I was because I didn't know anything about it. I was it was a summer of 20. And again, you'll know if you watch the documentary, the story is well known, which is I was doing research on it because I couldn't figure it out. It's like, wait, why is this topic still here? Exactly. And then I thought, OK, well, I can shoot down. I never got married or had kids, so I had a lot of free time on my hands. If, if you're old enough to make it as far as I have, it's a lot of free time. So <laughs> there's only so many games you can play. So I'd gone down every rabbit hole there was and flat earth I'd never bothered to look at. And so I started looking at it in 2014. I was like, well, I can disprove this. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. I, I, it, there's all sorts of conspiracies I don't like. And this one I definitely don't like. So I, I should be able to shoot it down. And I went to the official flat earth society, which was, I think, based out of Hong Kong. Uh, but, it, but it was based by a British guy, which was weird. And there was only like 500 members. And I remember the forums were being moderated by trolls. Who were just tearing people apart it's like there's nothing to see here it's they're not serious go away there's nothing to see here it's not serious go away and they kept doing that over and over it's like well first off why would you why would you have trolls guarding the velvet rope and the second is why would there be trolls there anyway if you're a troll and you want to make people cry in social media on a regular basis you can do that on youtube 24 7. right all you have to do is go into any video you've seen it right there's people that in fact, the, the running joke is, can you make a video that says, well, back before there was, you know, yes, like and not, like and not like, could you get 100 likes without a dislike, right? Mm -hmm. Almost impossible because you'd get a guy in there who just hit dislike and say, everybody here sucks and this video sucks too, just because, right? You could make a video. I'm not kidding. I am not exaggerating. There's some mostly young men and they're just evil. Women get a pass in this where you could make a video about puppies and kittens playing together in a children's cancer ward, right? You're still going to have some guy within the first 100, 100 ratings. It's going to come and it's like, everybody here is terrible. I hate you. I hate your religion. I hate your sexuality. Shuts the door, you know, drop mic. It's like, really? And, and that's, it's just people. This is human nature. So there you go. 
but yeah, before before we before social media came up, we wouldn't even be talking, for example. This doesn't even happen without social media. That's what changed it. Uh, we are uh, Flat Earth 2.0. So when people say, oh, you're part of the Flat Earth Society, it's like, no, we're not. Flat Earth Society was just a little forum that was hobbling along because of the just generic internet stuff, you know, back since the, the mid-90s. When we came along, uh, it was just adding jet fuel to it. So, and, and so we didn't we didn't even talk to the Flat Earth Society. It was like the first two and a half years we were doing this, and then finally, some of the from the Flat Earth Society says, "Hey, wow, I like your work? Is there anything you know we can help you with?" It's like, where have you guys? Been? <laughs> we don't need you. <laughs> sorry, we're doing just fine, thank you. And we just you know hit the accelerator and just drove on. So, okay. What well, is the Flat Earth Society? Also, the one that has a lot of stuff that you don't believe in, I think. No, 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 no. Well, okay. The, no, for the most part, they got it right, if, from our opinion. But they didn't do nearly the research that we did. They didn't do the long distance photography. They didn't do the laser tests. They didn't do airplane tests. Uh, they didn't have subject matter experts. They didn't have debates. I mean, they didn't have any. Of that. I mean, it was only 500 guys, as far as we could tell. And I mean, hell, the the app alone that we made, uh, the the Flat Earth Sun Moon and Zodiac Clock app out there. I mean, hell, how many people are on that thing now? Like one hundred twenty thousand, and that's just with the app, right? That's just a that's just a it's a great app. But um, the only thing they got different from us, and I, very few people from us our our side embrace it, is that they believe. Again, hanging on to space because for us, it's like, look, if you're in a sound stage, that sound stage could be anywhere, and the sound stage simulates space like a planetarium. Sometimes you get a flat Earth society member that would say, "Oh no, you're an asteroid in space that's going up at uh, nine meters per second per second to create a, the simulation of gravity," and our most of our people would be like, "What space are you talking about? Why would there be space? You're you're on a sound stage, Shakespeare, Shakespeare all the world's a stage." It's not moving. You could be on somebody's freaking desk right now. Okay. <laughs> or in a room full of stages or on a Hollywood backlot. Anyway. True, true. Um, okay, so um, I don't know if you've heard about this, but they say we're in a post-truth climate. Have you have you heard about that? So post-truth um, climate. I don't know if I'd call it that. I know what you're saying, though. Look, I'm a huge, I absorb so much media and everything media related. Mm -hmm. What has happened, in fact, I read an article a couple of days ago, which was, and I hope it I hope it catches on. I don't think they got it quite right yet, which is what's happened is media has been fractional, fractioni, fractional, has been fractured to such a degree to where it's the equivalent of what we used to back and do back in the day called target marketing. You, you probably know what target marketing is, where you market things to a very slim demographic. Whatever, if once you know your product is appealing to this demographic, that's all you focus on. It's like we are selling to this age group, this this sex, this income maker. That is a target demographic, and we that's what you make sure. Imagine doing that though with media, meaning there are so many different media options out there that. I mean, come on, there's kids that literally now get their news from TikTok, which mm -hmm. is hard to believe considering how short it is, right? You know, the, the the segments are so short. The older set relies on mainstream news. The red team follows the you know, red team leaning. You know, when I say red team, I mean um, Republicans over on this side. Republicans follow a certain media. Democrats follow certain media. Everybody, it's almost like everybody's in their own echo chamber, some bigger than others. So yes, post post truth, but all but at that point it's like, what is objective truth? You know, mm -hmm. I, I try to tell people and I, I I'm not trying to pick on journalism, right? Mm -hmm. But I say, okay, there's no such thing as fake news, right? Fake news isn't a thing, right? There's some people that actually believe that there's no such thing as fake news. And I go, okay, fine. Everything on Fox News is absolutely true. And everything on CNN is absolutely true can't resolve both of those because those networks hate each other and absolutely accuse each other constantly in the United States of lying constantly. Both of them have said, you know, Donald Trump did not invent the term fake news. Mm -hmm. like, fake news has been a while, uh, around there for a while. I'm hope hopefully that's where you were going with this, the post truth thing, or unless you have a different definition. <laughs> uh, I think the, the <laughs> thing I'm reading about was 
that we're in an, uh, I guess, an era where, like, or um, anti-government and anti-expert sentiments are at an all-time high. Depending Do on you... what media group you... Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. 100%. There are all sorts of anti-government... Well, anti-whoever the current administration is, there will be media groups specifically going after it, especially here in the United States. But go mm -hmm. ahead. Um. So do you think... Do you think that has to do with conspiracy theories or do you think that people are just trusting in the government less and thus conspiracy theories are thriving okay or do you think, like, no 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 i i got you i got you so from what i've seen again because i'm older because i so I've, I've i've gotten a chance to see it evolve what's happened is kind of like with social media the production value of social media has now equaled mainstream for the most part i mean yes mainstream might have more expensive sets and better cameras right but if most people are watching their news through their cell phone mm -hmm. there, there's there's really almost no difference so that being said you have people that he won social media now people have have even more credibility than mainstream news and they can it they can deliver a message all right, sorry, let me back up for a second here. Think about this. The government runs the mainstream. The government has, all governments, especially America, has problems though, right? Meaning you're trying to, you know, all governments want to control the population through and through media. Government, you know, there is no independent journalism out there. Sorry to say, I don't want to break your bubble there because I know you're going into journalism. But eventually you, you, will, you will deal with some of this. But... Now they're having a hard time because there's all sorts of platforms out there with people that are getting just as much influence as mainstream. For example, uh, you've probably heard of Tucker Carlson, right, from the United States. Yeah. Tucker Carlson gets fired from Fox News, goes out and does his own, and now does his own little podcast through X. On X, just from his com little compound at his house, and it's getting more views than most of the, the shows on Fox and a lot of the shows on other mainstream. Does that make him more or less credible? And and your answer might be, well, depends if he's attacking the government or not. It's like, well, but yeah, yeah. Sorry, short short answer to what what you were saying there. Yeah, the, there is a lot of anti-government set sentiment, and that is because it's a slippery slope. Once you start going down the conspiracy rabbit holes, really tough to get out of. Really, really tough. Again, kind of like our ninety nine percent retention rate. Right. Once you go one and I warn people, I've warned people in, in my last book. I said, look, if you like your life the way it is, right? If you wake up and everything is awesome, thumbs up, don't go down the flat earth road. Because once you get down to us, you can't turn back. Uh and I, I know the matrix is actually older than you at this point. But the matrix, the whole red pill, blue pill thing, which is once you are out of the matrix, you're out. You can't go back in because even if you could, what are you gonna do? You're gonna look at things completely different so there you go i know i sort of ramble feel free i know you're being polite but feel free to be like hey <laughs> stay on track that's all relevant <laughs> um so also do you think uh i guess censorship right that's pretty big that's a pretty big thing on i know what you're like, talking about censorship what's that sorry <laughs> okay um do you think that that has helped to get people more interested yes People yes. are, people, human beings love a mystery. That's the mm -hmm. first thing. And if the powers that be try to curb or restrain that mystery in any way, it makes it even more mysterious. And people, again, CA, people love a mystery. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, hey, don't look at that mystery. It, when, when somebody in authority says, yeah, don't, don't even bother with that mystery or put a big wiki banner under, mm -hmm. I mean, Look, I appreciate it. Uh, honestly, it backfired. It's like, you're if you have to put a wiki banner under my topic, you know, Flat Earth, and no, it doesn't show up anywhere else, people are like, hey, why is that there? Right? Mm -hmm. Come on. The the crime shows always sell. They all Crime movies always do well because there's all this mystery that people want to figure out. And, and we are that mystery. And so, yes. Yes, absolutely. Censor censorship has done nothing but help us in the end.
I mean, yeah, it's curbed our numbers and it's pissed off some people. And I'm sure there's some content creators that um, that aren't out there because they they they're worried about censorship. But all it did for like my crew is that it it said, well, OK, we're going to stay on YouTube. We're going to go. All, we're going to try all these other platforms just to see if it does any better. Well, what'd you do there? You just, you know, now now we're on other platforms beforehand. We weren't because we didn't care. It's like, no, YouTube's fine. We're good. Now, now everyone's trying everything they can uh, and doing, you know, doing their own sites and their own memberships and their own paywalls and anything they can to get out there. And the trolls help us, by the way. One more thing, which is you see every, you look it up, every major channel you can think of has done a flat earth video, at least one, because they, they know that they can get the metrics off it. And that just helps our metrics. So whenever trolls come after us and they like dedicated anti-flat earth channels, I tell people, like, I wish we had a thousand more like them. Because all they're doing is helping our metrics. Because the internet, the big hive mind internet knows all this. They know what's popular. Anyway. So do you think flat earthers will ever become the majority? That's a tough question. And I've been asked this before. Um, I am, I personally am an optimist because I've run into the, the best thing about flat earth is we're under the radar. And the worst thing about Flat Earth is we're under the radar, meaning we don't have any special sticker. Well, I mean, yeah, every once in a while you get a bumper sticker, but we don't have any arm patches or special hats unless you really go out of your way. So, I mean, most people, I mean, I've lost count of stories where people bump into others where it's like, oh, wow, you're into that too? Yeah, man. Sitting next to each other for like a year. Never knew it because the other, both sides were afraid to bring it up. 90% um, of our, our members are still in the closet. However, I am a big believer, if you want to look up something, look up something fun called the 100th monkey effect. You ever heard of this? Yes. Yeah, 100th monkey effect. I think it applies because, it, one, it screams software that we're in some sort of virtual reality anyway. But if there's a beneficial update, automatic hot patch fix for monkeys why, mm -hmm. or nature in general, why wouldn't there be one for ours? So I'm a big believer that once a certain amount of people know about something, now granted we have cross-cultural issues, but once, but I think it could happen in some demographics, then everyone would figure it out. But yes, to your question, is there a p tipping point where it's actually more cool to be in flat earth than less cool? I mean, governments have already proven they can, they can steer people in, in certain directions. Uh, but we've been doing it fairly organically. I say that, but at the same time, you remember YouTube, when they were promoting us for three years, they're owned by Google, which is owned by the Alphabet Group, which who knows what the, what probably BlackRock above them. And so they were being, we were being allowed to be, we were being promoted by someone that was bigger than us. Don't know why exactly. I've got some theories, but anyway. That sort of answer your question? Yes. Kind of. Wait, you said someone you were being promoted by someone bigger than you. Well, so yeah, I mean, think think about this. YouTube was promoting us, right? We don't have people working at YouTube, so, so who you was... think that was intentional and not just uh, because flat Earth is a binge topic? Well, meaning, all right, let me go the other way. If you didn't want flat Earth to get out. Right. Flat Earth is real. Right. And again, this thing has been hidden. And and don't don't forget that this is we're only talking about a secret that has only been around since about 1960. Right. Meaning we didn't even know for sure our best and brightest because we didn't have the technology to explore everything until 1960. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to shut down Flat Earth, remember what we said earlier, meaning social media, that's the only reason we're talking right now. So if you wanted to, you know how easy it is to do things in software. And I come from a software background. If you wanted to write it, that algorithm is easy. Meaning, you know, all you have to do is say, if you see Flat Earth in these combinations, don't ever promote it on YouTube, one. Uh, reduce, I mean, you can shadow ban it to the point where it's not even relevant at all. You could crank the faucet down to where YouTube or to where Flat Earth doesn't get out. But they didn't do that. In fact, they did the opposite. They promoted us. And so, yeah, someone bigger than us. And can I, come on, I'm a conspiracy guy. I'm going to run with this. Someone bigger than us was allowing us to do what we did. And you know, if you want a motivation, I'll, I'll just throw out one idea for you. Mm -hmm. If Flat Earth opens minds up, because once you're into Flat Earth, you're into everything. 
You know, once mm-hmm. once it, you, your head cracks open like a walnut and you're like you you revisit every conspiracy that ever was. I can't I literally cannot tell someone to go away when they bring up something, you know, like, oh, hey, did you know that Elvis is still alive and he's dating Bigfoot? And it's like beforehand, it'd be like, get out of here. Right now. Now, what am I supposed to say? Right. You know, I start my day with flat earth. Right. So it's like, OK, I'll give you a few minutes. What do you got? Right? Just, just because I can't. I don't have a leg to stand on. Right. So if Flat Earth opens up minds to everything else, maybe there's something else coming down the pipe that people have to be open-minded to, and this was the easiest way they could do it. So we did the legwork for them. We opened up their minds, but they've got something else coming. He's like, okay, what's bigger than Flat Earth? Well, um, existence of another civilization, that'd be bigger than us, bigger than Flat Earth. Uh, Existence of some sort of divine being, that could be, or the meaning of life, those three. That's basically it. And flat earth would make it easier to digest whatever. So if it, like, seriously, think about it. If a golden spaceship just landed somewhere in Melbourne, right? I don't think you'd have people in the running in the streets anymore. 40 years ago, you would. People would be like, hands, they'd, ah, run for your lives. They'd be running back and forth. Nowadays, you'd have two camps. You'd have one group that'd be up there. You know, uh, mostly nerds and 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 clickers. You know, it's like it's like, oh yeah, you know, people taking movies and selfies, and and say, dude, they do look like the people from Avatar, right? And then you get the other people though, the religious side. It's like we must worship the blue people. Get churches, start building right now, right? And that's but but that's about it. I mean, I don't think there'd be panic in the streets. Well, depending on how the spaceship showed up, you can't do it noisy, you know, big heavy handed stuff like that. But yeah. So anyway, sorry, short answer to that. Yes, I do think we were promoted because I saw it. I watched it happen. And I I come from software. I know it's like, why are they letting us do this? Because I I could have, hell, I could have wrote the code that could have shut, you know, shut us down if they wanted to. And you wait until I send you the links afterwards. We were absolutely, we were bigger than everything. The only people that were ahead of us when we, when they took down the scoreboard were, you know, people like, Katy Perry and Taylor Swift. We already beat Lady Gaga, right? Mm-hmm. Taylor Swift, um, Justin Bieber, people like that. And I don't, by the way, I don't count. And Bob, we're talking total social media things. I always like think it's interesting, like like PewDiePie, when he had, what, 80, 60 million subs at the time, when you did relevant search results, he was less than 5 million. Why? Because, well, his subs weren't real because he was buying them. And and so when people say, oh, you know, Mr. Beast is the biggest in the world, it's like, uh huh, yeah, he's got he's got more subs than most of the population of the United States. I'm sure that's totally legit, right? But uh, but but yet in relevant search results, he wouldn't have been that high. Anyway, we were we were like the people's choice of social media <laughs> at the time. Anyway. Okay, so just to clarify, yeah, you're saying that you're definitely promoted by YouTube, and you don't think that. That's just because YouTube wanted to make money and Flat Earth just happened to be the most binge-worthy thing at the time. At the, at the surface level, you are correct. Money is very, very important, right? I mean, it's it's one of the arguments I use for why there is Flat Earth because this world is is made on greed and money and power, right? That's, that's our rules. That's what we go by, especially in America. Capitalism. Go team. Uh, but... Like when they locked down Antarctica, which was made out of money, made out of resources, and they locked it down. Nobody can do anything there ever. Mm-hmm. The tr- the Antarctic Treaty. Look, in fact, I'll I'll send you a link to the Antarctic Treaty. Look that up if you get a chance. That was beyond money, meaning whatever was in an Antarctica, the billions and billions, hell, we'll just say a trillion dollars worth of resources, was not enough to run the risk. Apply that to YouTube. Yeah, YouTube was making millions of dollars off of us. Sure. But in the grand scheme of things, it was still no, nowhere close to what Google was making as a whole and what the Alphabet Corporation above them was making. Mm-hmm. So the the money driving force, yes, for YouTube it was good, but they didn't absolutely need it. Oh, sure. It was something they could stick a pin in and be, you know, their, their little flag and say, oh, look at this. But remember, they shut it down after three years. Mm-hmm. So either you could go one of two ways. Either the money was important for the first three years until somebody said, yeah, this is getting out of hand. And somebody it was an oversight. I don't believe in oversights. I don't. The mm-hmm. The people at the highest level of power, they're too smart. We're not talking about your average politicians. They're as dumb as rocks. 
people <laughs> there there are people that have levels of clearance it's the look politicians are bought and sold all day long like like baseball cards the people above them the one of the first rules of power you'll learn this is stay hidden mm -hmm. which is you can't be the puppet master and be the puppet at the same time uh it's a napoleon saying he goes never put yourself in a position where you can be overthrown mm -hmm. they can't overthrow you if they don't know who you are and the only way it, it is the curse of being the puppet master you want to be the celebrity right you want to be the king you want to be the president you want to be the prime minister but you're better off being the guy that buys them because mm -hmm. then because again if they get overthrown who cares <laughs> Just buy a new one but but at the same time you are quietly behind the scenes you know but a lot of people don't know who you are most people don't know who you are so any other clarification i can give you there does that kind of make um, sense yeah no it does keep going if you want <laughs> um so wh why do you think then that they did kind of shut it down oh well first Okay, if it's not about the money, because I don't think after three years the money was worth it. I mean, sure, we were doing well, but YouTube was generating massive amounts of content every day. I mean, what is it up to now? Like 100 hours every minute? No, 100 hours every second? It's ridiculous how much stuff is uploaded to YouTube on a regular basis. Um, I think for the most part, they didn't need us anymore, meaning uh, we had saturated the market. I mean, they, again, you promote somebody for three years, that's a long time. And that's, that's, that's like cat years in social media. That's a long freaking time. And they didn't kill us. What I knew, what I saw when the Senate hearing happened was they, people, censorship didn't really kick in. It was a soft censor. So they didn't hit the brakes. They just took their foot off the gas. That's mm -hmm. all they did. So yeah, we would saturated the market. That, that was basically it. We were everywhere. Again, wait till I send you that link where that guy, when you have people that are complaining that Flat Earth is showing up too much in recommendations, that's a pretty good indicator that you've done everything you can, you can in that. At that point, they just started recommending all sorts of different people and, and picking different icons and 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 not caring so much about uh, buying people that were buying likes and hits and crap like that. So. But, I don't know. I'm just thinking about it and I don't feel like I was recommended any flat earth videos back in 2015. All right. What were you searching for in 2015? If you don't mind me asking, because you, you're young, right? You you would have been, how old were you in 2015? Uh, that was a good question. 20. Really? Oh, you're older than I thought. You look very young. Thank the, you. <laughs> the, okay. Um, when you, okay. It wasn't bulletproof, but believe me when I say Flat Earth was there. Now, of course, uh, Flat Earth isn't going to, if you were looking up for something very, very specific, Flat Earth isn't going to show up everywhere if you were looking for beauty tips mm. or, or, God, who was big, who was big back in 2015 or Katy, Katy, Katy Perry's best songs or crap like that. Flat Earth's probably not going to show up in that search. But anything that's even remotely tied to it is was going to show up. So who knows? I don't know what you're searching for back then, but you were one. You were one of the lucky ones. And I don't think. I think women. Again, I'm not trying to pick. I think women search for. They probably again the the programmer that that built the algorithm was a French guy, so yeah. he probably didn't. He was probably leaning more towards the male search yeah. engine side of things. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> that's all. Um, but 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 you but you have a point by the way that you didn't run into flat earth when mm -hmm. when you were out there at the same time like for example I'll give you every once in a while people slip through the cracks I was recommended a music channel today who she did a flat earth music review compilation three years ago I had never seen it before and she had recommended lots of our people in our in in our community that done music because we have a whole music section and never even who she was. Or I'll give you another one. Um, the guy that trolled the big um, guy, I think he had a million, million, two million subs, two million subs, I think. Um, Tyler Oliveri, who who trolled our uh, conference in Vegas. Never heard about this kid ever before in my life. And yet, there he was, two million subs. It's like, okay, sure. And I and again, I'm on I'm looking at a lot of stuff, but because everybody now, because social media is every, every, if you're under the age of God, 30, 
maybe even older, you are on social media. It's gotten so broad now that there's all sorts of people that get missed. So who knows? Maybe you just missed it. There you go. Trust me when I say this. You wait, you wait till I send you the numbers. It was scary. Scary what we were going up against. Uh-huh. Um, you mentioned that you have a book. Three. Three. Yep. So do you think there's still a place for books? No. And print is de print print is dead. Print has been dead for a while. Yeah. Books are books are a place marker. So that when you do a podcast or any sort of media thing, it's something they can hold up. That's it. And Oh. and I know this, and I'm sorry, it just is. I mean, yeah, yeah, there are books out there, but the younger generations aren't. I mean, come on, even me. I mean, I my library isn't huge. I mean, I read most of my text on screen. Mm -hmm. uh, I've gotten more hits from my audible versions and mm -hmm. uh, the... any other or on or pdfs that that i that i give out out there um but no books books are basically a play i'll, I'll give you a quick one there was a, a big podcast that wanted me to come on and the first thing they asked for was my uh, my my book Mm this first thing it's like hey can we have a book so the host can had something he can flash around it's like oh yeah mark here's his new book right that it is it is a time-honored tradition but It is mostly for media and interviews and and stuff like that. Um, now, but then after that, they asked for, if I had a DVD. Of course, that's outdated. Uh, and then they asked if I had a website. And a lot of people don't even have websites now. You know, it's just some sort of social media collection that you have. But no, but I mean, I mean, I make a little bit of money off my books. But I can tell that you know, for most people, I mean, but for example, when I go do things like meetups or conferences or public speaking things. 90% of the time people take selfies, 10% of the time I sign books. You know, sign autographs for books. Most most of the time it's just selfies though. That's that's the thing. So you're saying or well, you're saying that the physical version of the book is out there, but what about the content? Like what about like an ebook or the audible book, audio book? Oh yeah, well as well, yeah, That's there still you go. Well, like for example, the Flat Earth Clues, which I don't know if you ever watched, you know, the how how I got into this. Uh, was initially just a uh, 12 part series of YouTube videos. And then a publisher, talk about weird, reverse how it happens. Publisher from London calls me up and says, Hey, can we turn your clues into a book? I go, Sure. What do I have to do? Right. And they go, Just send us, send us the, um, the, the text for it and we'll turn it into a book. It's like, Okay, sure. And that's how it, it repeated. You know, when I, and like and so everything's simultaneous now to where like i did the audio version sometimes i'll do just the audio version on youtube tube sometimes it's on audibles really depends what what they want to do and what i feel like doing that kind of help so you think that um i guess written information like non-video stuff you right. think that that is still helping to transmit the flat earth message or like flat earth information or yeah. do you think it's just kind of on the side and like if someone i don't know if you if there happens to be someone who likes to read then that would be for them but for the majority of people they'd probably just watch videos for the most there's an old saying which is it's an old question which is what is a human being's most common default state is it fear mm -hmm. Or is it laziness? Mm -hmm. It's laziness. I'm going to, I'll quote, uh, and the reason I say that, I'll, in fact, I'll quote one of our guys, Jaron, uh, from Jaronism, who who said, he goes, you want to be rich? Find a way to make people lazier. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's actually pretty good. I mean, by that, I mean, a picture is worth a thousand words. Mm -hmm. So if I can flash all sorts of images at you in red, you know, fast, you know, strobe effect, or maybe linger on it for a little bit. Why would I have text behind it? As long as there's words, as long as there's spoken words behind it, that's what most people are are drawn to. The clues, for example, uh, I rarely had any text on screen. It was just my voice, just talking about it, to where people would would listen to it in the background, and and just listen to my stuff. Most there's a lot a lot of flat Earth content is it's a combination of 
once they get the initial information, it's like, here's the maps, map, 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 map. Here's the experiments, pop, 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 pop. Once they get in their head, then they, after the first six months to a year, then they really just start listening to things. You know, mm -hmm. kind of like audiobooks, but it's like, okay, here's a guy that debated, a flat earth debate that went on for three hours. Okay, they listen to that in the background. Mm -hmm. That's way more powerful than text. Text, for, as you know, requires concentration. You know, mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, yes, I have to go through news feeds every day and look at stuff, but that's because I have to. There is no option for that. I suppose if there was a text to speech thing, but I don't really I mean the speech thing. I suppose I could do that one of these days, but I'm probably not going to. I like reading faster than than uh, than somebody could read it anyway. But yes, most people go through videos and a lot of those videos, most of those videos do not have text on screen. Uh, and if it is, maybe it's a caption here and there. Every once in a while, there might be some text, but you are not going to see a lot of scrolling, <laughs> scrolling, scrolling texts. Uh, in fact, when I did the, um, uh, I could send you the link to it if you want to, uh, the Flat Earth Clues, the, the second book, when I did the audio version, uh, no one even requested uh, transcripts. In fact, I, th that should be a, a cue right there, right? No one, people will, every once in a while, will ask me for an audio link to my book mm. or books, but they won't ask for it rarely will they ask for just the text right so they're just lazy that's all i mean it, it it it's with everybody in fact look media and producers that i've worked with over the years do they do the same thing you know when they when they try to find someone to interview on flat earth they'll they'll like they'll type in they won't do much of a search at all and then they'll find me and they'll be like oh or or dave weiss or one of the other guys and they'll they'll say They'll listen. There could be a 40 minute interview. They'll listen for like six minutes and they'll be like, oh, yeah, he's fine. Bring him. <laughs> OK, sure. Sure. Why not? It's 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 a weird social media has changed so many things. But some I don't know how many for better, a lot for worse or a lot just because it's easier. But yes, to your point, because of that, people can get sucked into rabbit holes so fast and uh, come on governments have a hard time they're they're trying they're so desperately trying to to catch up certain countries have locked down things but mm -hmm. uh america tough tough to do here which is why we're in real trouble we've never been more polarized by the way we're we're a freaking wreck out here i don't know when the last time you've been to america is but i've never been oof, well it's it's not pretty right now we've never we've never been at, at more odds with each other than we are right now we are so polarized we're we're at the brink of something i don't know what it is yet but we'll find out but the movie's coming out by the way it's called uh civil war there's a movie coming out in like three weeks it, oh, really? it, yeah it's called civil war and it's about all these states seceding from the union and going to battle with each other we've never made a movie like this and we didn't even make the movie the, the british did some irony <laughs> there Anyway, I'll send I'll send you the link to that too. Okay. Um. So, do you think so? Then, do you think that laziness is what was preventing more people from getting into the flat Earth movement before because they didn't have access to all these videos and all this content, and they didn't want to read the books. Um. Yes. 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 Yeah. Again, I, I've run into it way too many times and we catch a lot of flack for that, which is, you know, there's lots of people. It's like, well, how much research did you do? I mean, it's it is the old trope, which is a flat earther that became a flat earther because they watched a bunch of YouTube videos and nothing mm -hmm. else. Right. Uh, they And we encourage people with why I say in the clue is like, like, do your own research, ask questions. Right. Don't just watch a couple of videos and be like, oh, I'm in. I mean, that's great and all, but you really should know your stuff, which is why uh, the people that do our debating for us and our public speaking crew is is really up on their stuff. I mean, we're doing nothing but research and reading a lot all the time. But yes, um, we appeal to the lowest common denominator in terms of the clues were really easy to understand. The one, I'll give you another one really quick, which you you probably already figured out by now. I've talked to a lot of scientists over the years, mm -hmm. and I tell them, I go, look, the re one of the reasons we're we're popular 
and we're gaining ground and you're not is because we've created a, a, a model of the universe which is easier to understand than the solar system model. And until you come up with a way to explain that easier than ours, you're just going to keep losing ground. And science comes back and says, that's beneath us. We shouldn't have to make it easier. And it's like, okay. And, and then they come back and say, well, just because it's easy doesn't mean it's right. And I go, hmm, good point. But it is easier. And people will go for it. They always have and they always will. Uh, the argument, again, I'm old enough to remember when text for, texting first came out right texting made no sense when it first came out at all right it was clunky right you had to relearn how to type crap right there were no emoticons when it first came out so you lost tons in translation why did people keep doing it because emotionally it was easier to do you could ask questions you didn't have to be invested in talking to someone you didn't have to pick up the phone you just say i'm busy right now right or asking someone on a date you've probably done it yourself right you're there are relationships that rise and fall on texting even though mechanically it's way harder to do it's easier emotionally flat earth is easier psychologically to understand i mean you try to explain someone the speed of light for example we have to slow down the speed of light to like per second because if you try to do it per minute people just lose their minds it's like 720 million miles an hour they are or something like that it's like that makes no sense no one, that's a number that's, that's beyond most comprehension. And so we go, oh no, flat earth, the universe, you're just in a big one room studio apartment. That's all you're in. It's easy to understand. You don't need quantum physics and advanced calculus and trig and all that stuff. All you need is this basic geometry. There it is. You're in it. It is a soothing, flat earth is a soothing, warm blanket for uh, the, the mind that doesn't want to try to grasp the solar system model and why should they it doesn't make any sense it never did but because of because again kind of like thinking about infinity right you know when you're dreaming you're not don't don't dream about try to go to sleep by counting sheep try it try to go to sleep by imagining you're in a ship leaving pluto and then where do you go right light years away so sorry i went off off road there i oh, tend God. to do that i asked you was that was it about the laziness thing <laughs> it, it was well it is the laziness. well it is i i was expanding on the laziness thing which was the the people again people are lazy and we flat earth is again when i made the clues i there's no math in, in the flat earth clues at all it's just connect the dots as you know growing up connect the dots is easy all you have to do is make the leap yourself and say in one you know once you draw and connect that first dot it, it just falls and, and you're just like oh yeah i'm drawing it oh look it's the flat earth it's super easy to understand and that's why people get into it. It's it's it makes more sense. People and I know the argument's going to be, and we're not getting into the nuts and bolts, you and I. But the argument I say is, is like, are there holes in the flat Earth model? Sure, you bet. There's all sorts of little things that don't make sense, but there are way more things that don't make sense in the solar system model, and we put a huge spotlight on it. And with megaphones. And we it's like, look at this. That doesn't make sense. Especially, by the way, I gotta ask you really quick, real, real quick. Because when I when I talk to people from other countries, you know, I have to ask, remember, I'm criticizing the United States space program, right? I criticize this on a regular basis. Why do you believe the Americans went to the moon? You're not from yeah. here. Why, why, why do you why do you take it as face value? Do you do, so no, yes or no? You th do you think the Americans went to the moon? No. No, you're halfway there. You're almost ah. there. Seriously, no, that is this that is that is the segue into flat earth. I uh, that is the the litmus test that gets you there. If I ask somebody normally it's Americans, but if I ask an American, I say, you know, do you think the you know, we went to the moon? And if all of a sudden, you know, they you know, they they get that glossy look in their eyes, those brave boys, you know, and a single tear rolls down their face and it turns into a bald eagle and flies away then yeah, I'm not going to bring up flat earth to them. They're lost. They're a lost cause to me. But yeah, many people, like when I talk to people in Europe, uh, I'm really surprised by the way you said that because many people outside the country, when I say, why do you think the Americans went to the moon? They say, well, because it was on television and your news would never lie about something like that. It's too big. It's like, you don't know us at all. <laughs> the Americans <laughs> lie. The Americans lie about all sorts of stuff. Our journalism, not, not exactly clean cut. 
So, by the way, and and thank you for for answering that way because uh, most most people that answer the way you did, it's because it's so far in the rearview mirror, it's not a thing anymore. Meaning, mm -hmm. we went to the moon in the 1960s. That's a long time ago, right? Mm -hmm. You know, in in social media years, you that might as well be the pharaohs. That is a mm -hmm. long time ago, and there's all sorts of people nowadays. Your your age would be like, okay, why why haven't we gone now? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Why, why do we keep kicking the can down there? In fact, why aren't the Americans on there permanently? Why isn't there a big base? Why isn't there a hotel <laughs> that, that we can go to on the moon right now? I mean, that's what they were talking about years and years ago. We made science fiction entire series based around that. No one's going anywhere. Why? We know why. What else you got? Um, what is, do you have an idea of what, uh i guess like the demographic that a part of the flat earth movement like what age group or yes it is mostly um uh gay black dwarves no it's 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 400 pound red-haired polynesian people ah no it's not uh, it is no I, in I can only tell you, OK, we do cover all demographics. This is true. However, the people I can only give you the ones that go to our conferences. So the ones that go to our conferences, for example, would be Republican. Mm -hmm. Over 30, probably over 35 white. Mm -hmm. uh, and middle class okay. leaning lower middle class now the democrats that we have generally don't go to conferences they're used in fact democrats by my feeling is is most democrats that are in the flat earth they'll correspond to us but they're not going to show up at conferences they're not going to make content they're not going to put themselves out there mostly because of friends and family and co-workers i know some mm -hmm. first I, I have family members that won't come out because it's like if we're people I've lost count of how many people have said, yeah, really, really great talking to you. Don't ever mention my name. <laughs> right. You know, it, it's like, okay, fine. Uh, what other demographic did you want to, were you curious about? Is that kind of, I don't know if you, there was a YouGov poll in 2018 Yep. and it said that um, only, a, I think it was, only 66% of like young adults, so I think like yes. millennial Gen Zs, yeah. believe that the earth is round. Do you yeah. know about that? Yes, I did. Yeah. In fact, I, I remember that because Fox News and Greg Gutfeld uh, from the Gutfeld show made fun of it. You know, there's a number of comedians, a number of comedians went after this one. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about that poll, and I absolutely believe it, and I could send you a, um, uh, a thing from do you watch you watch any gaming channels at all? Do you game at all? No. There was a um uh oh, what was his name? Oh crap. I just had a brain seizure. Um there was a big you gaming YouTube channel. I'll figure it out here in a little bit. It's just lost in the back of my head. But he actually did a poll. So to your point, yes, there's all sorts of kids that 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 don't don't believe the the world is is round. You know, even though we don't say round, by the way, round is two dimensional um, sphere globe ball. Round could be a dinner plate or a tire or something like that. But what happened was he did a real time poll uh, while he was doing like a Twitch stream or something like that, you know, pup, pup poll and had people vote immediately. And we were winning, I think, 54 percent to to 46 percent. I think at one point and never changed. We never lost during that poll. It was in real time. And the, and the, the votes that were coming in were just cranking in really, really fast, thousands of votes. And the problem is, is that when you're younger, peer pressure is so important. So, so important. And so, yeah, if it's an anonymous poll, like the, the gov poll, oh sure. They'll say it. Or, or the, um, uh, the, the poll that was done by this gamer. Sure. They'll do it, but you try to get them to do it in class try you know almost impossible uh every once you'll get some bold kids you know i've talked to a lot of classrooms over the over the years uh you'll get some bold kids and be like yeah i'm proud of it you know i'm trying to be rebels you know trying to be i'm, I'm gonna do i'm gonna blaze my own trail but most of them 
just won't. But I mean, we know they're out there though because they make TikTok videos or they watch. I mean, there's a re look. These hits have to come from somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. you know, all these millions and millions and millions of hits. I mean, hell, there's like a billion hits combined on YouTube alone. So who's hitting them, right? It's not just adults. So yeah, you're right. Good point. The, the thank you, by the way, for bringing it. You're the first person I've ever talked to uh, that's uh, that's brought up the 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 dot gov poll in one of these. Good good memory, by the way. And and I. In fact, where did you see that? Where where did you uh, was it like uh, an article that you researched? It was an article, and then I and then I looked at the actual poll. Oh yeah, I'll send you I'll send you a link to. Uh, hang on, I'll, I'll do that. One. Yeah. I'm gonna get a bunch of links. Uh, live poll of young gamers. So this would be um, kids, early twenties, late teens. So yeah, and and they were scoring, and he and again it was totally anonymous. If you're if it's anonymous, oh yeah, we're they're with us. Mm. Identity, yeah, not so much, not so much. Again, people are they're scared. Why wouldn't they be? Do you think that's because most of them are getting their news from social media now, and that they're not? I guess they're not watching mainstream yeah. news. One, they're yeah. not really. Yep. Yeah. These are the kids that would ignore the wiki banner. Right. So they they would watch the video and be like, wiki. In fact, they may glance at it for a second, but they're just going to wave it off. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the, the wiki banner did nothing to mm -hmm. uh, to stop, especially kids. Kids aren't going to click on it. It's like wiki. That's stuff. I use wiki for school. <laughs> that's it. And and now some sort of chat GPT thing, which is a whole nother uh, deal. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Yes, that that is why social media. They're not the chances of them come on there's more targets out there. when i was growing up the only news you got that we had three channels here abc nbc cbs that's it right and they all had their news programs they all watch you couldn't even watch them differently they all came on at the same time so you had to pick one right so you and that was it right there was no internet mm -hmm. so imagine being a kid now and you have a wall of just a thousand different news things to go after what are you going to pick the fastest one that you can deliver the most information in the short amount of shortest amount of time, or more likely just something that was recommended by your friends. Dude, did you see this cool story? <laughs> look at these guys, look at these flat earth people, right? It's like we love that. It's like, yeah, look at the flat earth people. I mean, that's why the Netflix documentary did so well. Is because the people honestly, I because I sat in in some of the the studio audiences. First 30 minutes, they didn't even think it was a real movie. They thought it was a parody. <laughs> The, and and to where all of a sudden I watched their faces and be like, wait a minute, <laughs> kind of like kind of like you. It's like there's something on the internet I don't know anything about, and it's really big. And there's people have been talking about it, and I'm not talking about it. Why aren't we talking about this? This is a thing. And again, they they thought like the celebrities were 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 just playing a part. You know, when the yeah, I probably I think I sent you the list of like media celebrities that were what I've been talking about over the years. Yeah. They're all all into it. All you know, different. And again, celebrities and entertainers way more suspicious about the world because yeah, again, they're open minded, especially actors, actors and athletes. Actors because they're trained to be open minded for their parts, and athletes mm -hmm. because they have a lot of downtime. Like when you're you're with a lot of athletes, people know, especially professional athletes like basketball and baseball, they're traveling a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. They're in hotel rooms, they're on planes, they're on buses. So what do you think you're going to do? It's like, dude, you watch this video? Yeah. It's flat earth. I know. What else? Um, you mentioned podcasts before. Yeah. Do you think that is also a really big platform at the moment for the flat earth movement? Yes. Um, there's a lot of people in their late 20s, early 30s, but some younger people that and I don't know how well it's going to do because there's only so much room for podcasts out there that realize that podcasts can make you famous. Mm -hmm. So you've probably seen it on, there's lots of people just doing their own podcasts. Mm -hmm. You know, some people get thousands of, of, of people watching. Some people, you only get like 10 people in, in the chat room watching, but they're all trying. And since there, we don't really have a, a current definition of the dopamine 
uh, levels, comparatives. So if you have 10 people in your chat room, for a lot of people, it's like, wow, I got 10 people. We're doing well today, right? Other people's like, we only have 5,000 in chat. That's kind of a letdown, right? <laughs> and so it, it's, it's, it's a weird scaling. But because of that, you have people that will, a podcast isn't something where people just quit. I mean, I'm sure there's kids that quit immediately quit right away if you have even a little positive reinforcement little goes a long way and so yeah there's tons and tons and tons of amateur podcasters out there i mean david weiss uh who's done more interviews than i have i mean he's in the four figures now easily in the four figures um he can do it all day long i mean all, he's got a whatever script he sends to him absolutely works which is hey would you like to talk to a flat earther would i let's bring him on and these you know these things run from an hour to three hours long and sometimes he has to scale them back because he, you know, he gets he gets piled up. But yeah, podcasts are, are still now. Do there so many of them aren't going to make it, or some people just work it into their their regular jobs. Mm -hmm. So they're they're a barista. They work the hardware store. They do whatever. But at home, oh no, they're doing podcasts. You know, and you you know you see the production value. A lot of them are in garages or attics or or something like that. But yeah, podcasts are still a thing. And the big ones, kind of like movie stars. Um, when you have the like the really big podcasts like Tucker Carlson or Joe Rogan or guys like that, people's like, oh, you know, people aspire to do that. Look who he had on as a guest. I want to be that guy. Being a podcast, that sounds like a great job. Kind of like, again, the uh, fake famous thing where social media, one of the reasons why there's so many people, kids that are into social media, you've probably seen the thing. I, I can't speak to Australia, but in the United States and the UK more than a third one out of one out of every three kids in the united states for example they want social media as a career choice they want to be an influencer right and that's because the click chasers in front of them the generation in front of them made it seem so easy but that's what you're supposed to do right oh it's glamorous look at look how shiny everything is right this is great and behind the scenes they're they're hustling their asses off and so you got these kids like the 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 joke is it's like back in the day people wanted to be uh, firemen and policemen and and athletes and stuff now they want to be one thing and they in fact it's become really homogenized which is they want to be famous mm -hmm. it's like well, yeah but here's the here's the hook i'm i'm preaching to you now which is okay what do you want to be famous for what do you mean i just want to be famous it's like yeah but you got to do something right there's five five forms of art right there's uh pictures sculptures music dance and literature uh the pictures would be moving pictures and 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 movies and television stuff like that but that's the five forms of art you have to pick one you got to be famous for one of these things no i just want to be famous it's like what like paris hilton what what are you gonna be famous for you have to have you have to have earned it and that's where I think our civilization as a whole is just cascading into the spiral because there's all these kids now. I mean, it's not, it's no joke. All these kids, it's like, no, no, no. I just want the lifestyle. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, but you're not going to be happy with it. That's for sure. I mean, there's got to be a, I mean, you know, journalism, there's got to be a hero's journey. And there's so many kids now. It's like, no, no, I just want to go to the end. <laughs> what I want the, the happily ever after. It's like, yeah. I, everybody wants that, but but you can't just dismiss everything going up to that part. What happens then? Then you become like a trust fund kid who ends up ODing somewhere. Anyway, sorry, that's my preach. It's true though; it happens. Do you know any trust fund kids? No. Do you, know what, do you know what a trust fund is? Yeah, yeah, but I don't. Oh, I didn't go to a private school, so I don't think I. Know trust anyone. fund. Trust fund kids are. I mean, again, it's human nature. We want to be lazy at a trust fund. I mean, there's there's arguments with attorneys all day long, which is do the, it's not if you give the trust fund to the kid. Do you what age do you tell them? Mm -hmm. Meaning, do you tell them when they're 18? Do you tell them when they're 21? Do you tell them when they're older? Because if you tell them when they're 12, these kids are never going to do anything ever. Because like, why do I have to work? I've seen it. It's it's almost you could you could set your watch by it. I'm sorry, that's an old term. Nobody sets their watch anymore. Anyway, what's your next question? Um. What else you got? Question, but I forgot it. You forgot it. Got it. Social something about social media. Something about uh how the kids get sucked into rabbit holes and how they're how they're getting their news from anywhere that they can. And by the way, kids don't care about news. They don't care about when when they all all they want to do is be entertained. 
right? So mm -hmm. TikTok, they want a funny dance video. I mean, how many TikTok lip syncing videos do I have to watch? Right. And but they they're just thrilled with it. Uh, mm -hmm. or they they don't care about the mainstream news stuff, which used to creep into people's lives by the time they got out of college, is just not there anymore. They don't care about Ukraine, they don't care about Taiwan, they don't care about any of that crap. They just care. It's like, what who's who's Jake Paul fighting next? What's what's to I mean, really, I am worried because our list of celebrities in the United States has shrunk down. I mean, seriously. If you didn't know any better, if you were here, you'd swear there was only one musical tour the entire year, and that was Taylor Swift. Oh, my God. That was it. I re literally, that was all media cared about was, oh, where, what's Taylor Swift doing? And and I knew, I called it. You could even check my old podcast where I said, the second I saw her at, at a football game, the second I oh. saw her up in the skybox, I'm going, whoever's team is on the field right now that she's winking at, they're going to the Super Bowl <laughs> and they're going to win the Super Bowl. And they did. They absolutely because that's cross marketing for you. Oh, by the way, it's a whole that's a whole nother conspiracy, which is American professional sports. If they can be rigged, they will because you want to give the people what they want. When money gets up to a certain level, anything can be rigged to a certain extent. Okay, so a... the what? Do you, do you think tennis is rigged? No, no. I mean, no, because, okay, one, tennis is a rich man's sport first. And, mm -hmm. and oh, by the way, uh, Novak Djokovic, he's he's ours. I never sent oh, you the... I saw that video. I saw oh, you that saw video. the video? I saw, I saw people saying that it's a map of the UN or something. Because it was... Well, yeah, because they can't see it. No, that is, that is a flat earth map asteroid. We knew exactly what it was. Not only that, not only that, okay, two things that reinforced it. Any doubts that we have had, and I had no doubts when I saw this guy. First off, uh, he was anti-shot. He was a big mm -hmm. medical freedom guy. Remember, he was thrown out of the, the Australian Open, right? Because he wasn't going to get a shot. Our group and that group are almost identical. Meaning really? our conferences <laughs> were our, our conferences were almost all anti-shot. And anyone who's anti-shot, and I'm saying that term very deliberately so I don't catch myself. So if you are anti-shot, you are also a conspiracy person. And if you're a conspiracy person, you absolutely know about us. But the other thing that got me was, the thing that put me over was, he built a tennis center at the base of the Bosnian pyramids. Because it yeah. felt because he felt it, get, it gave him more energy. I need to look this up. <laughs> and that also makes sense because he's from freaking Serbia. It wasn't that far from him. You know, Serbia, Bosnia, it was totally good. Yeah, look up, look up uh, Novak Djokovic, uh, Bosnian... Uh, tennis center. I say it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. He's absolutely one of ours. Zoom, I'll send you the still shots. I remember in 2017 when he, he hand drew the flat. He didn't just do the flat. He wasn't into flat. He hand drew it and did a shot on Twitter for it. It was awesome. Yeah. And and the part that was brilliant, and I've sent this to other journalists, and they're sorry, sorry. They And they, they all said the same thing. They said, sorry, if he doesn't write the text or do a video, it's not credible enough. Mm. It's like, all right, that's fine. Wait, I know it. I know he's ours. Absolutely know he's ours. I mean, so, I was so proud of him when he got thrown out of Melbourne. I'm sorry, was is that where the Australian Open is? Yeah. Yeah, when he got thrown out of Melbourne, and then he comes back the next year, and they and, and he crushes it. He that was his high watermark for me. You know, when he, you know, when he was in the crowd with his family, just crying. I was, it was, it was a, for me, the most beautiful moment in sports for me, because it was vengeance. It was there was no nobody was going to. I mean, come on, you let him into the country and then you deport him, really? Because there were people like he shouldn't get any special treatment. He's number one in the world. He's absolutely getting special treatment. That's what being a celebrity does. Look, you're not going to deport LeBron James. Okay. Anything. That reminds me of my question. What? Um, how, how much of an influence do you think like celebrity flat earthers have had? So I know, um, do you, is it like Barry B.O.B. or is he called Bob? Bob? The rapper? Oh, rapper B.O.B. Yeah. B.O.B. Bob? Yeah. B -B, Bob. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you, so can, you, can, you can say Bob if you want, but rappers like doing that whole initial thing. So officially it's B.O.B. If you see the periods there, you have to spell out the letters. And it's like, I don't care. So I know he was pretty vocal about it. And then you have like really famous thought people. So do you think 
Do you think that they have a big influence? Yes. Yes. Yeah they, yeah, they do. Because people to this day, I mean, come on, it's it's never changed. Celebrity is celebrity. And the people, they call them followers for a reason. People look up to celebrities. Always have, always will. People, uh, they, they in I don't care what, it in, in business, in politics, in entertainment, in sports, and even journalism, right? People, like, you know who Tucker Carlson is. Mm -hmm. like, all right. You know, what's, what's he doing now? He's not even on a major network now. You still know what he's doing. When the, the difference was when rapper B.O.B. did his thing, it was early. He was one of our early celebs. And he made, not only did he make a whole album with a flat earth uh, logo on the cover, right? Not only do you do that, but then what, with the brilliance of it, and I don't think he even knew what it was going to, was he used a, like a 45 second sound clip of Neil deGrasse Tyson on a song in the album where he was criticizing Neil for selling out. Uh -huh. And Neil got, you know, then, then, then Neil fires back in a couple tweets. And then the next thing you know, that is, that is too, you know, from a journalism standpoint, that's gold right there. Mm -hmm. You've got a, you've got a Grammy nominated rapper going against the most popular media scientists in the world. Mm -hmm. I couldn't write that if I wanted to. And that lasted for months going that back and forth. It was, that was awesome. And that, that really helped us. And to where, um, that that it all it takes is one of those guys and then other celebrities follow which is kind of like when um the the bigger one though for us was Kyrie Irving the yeah. the basketball player when he came out and again it was good timing he came out right after he won the championship with LeBron James when when they were both on the same team he was high on life he was what 23 24 and, he, and he's like when you got that ring on your finger and LeBron's your best friend you know just won the championship you're like Nothing can touch me. I can say anything I want. And so you, he gets on a podcast with one of his friends. He's like, oh, yeah, Earth's flat, blah, blah, blah. And then he lands, and it's media day at the All-Star game. What do you think the media is going to do? You know full well. Sports guys are boring, right? It's like, you know, offense and defense, 110%. It's all about coaching. Blah. It's it's all the same old crap. And all of a sudden you hear, oh, yeah, by the way, that All-Star down there, yeah, he's into flat earth. It might as well have been a herd of cattle. You know, they came down there and just were hitting him with questions. And then other celebrities came on board. And because he not only was he one of the best players in the game, but he also went to a, a cool university as far as education goes. And he was vice president of the players union. He was on all fronts. He was absolutely untouchable. He wasn't just some dumb jock. It was awesome to where he had to, I'll, I'll tell you one more really quick. He had to apologize. He didn't retract it. He apologized to all the science teachers, notably, notably uh, urban science teachers. So he was at the, uh, you ever heard of uh, the Forbes 30 under 30 awards? Mm. Yeah. So Forbes, you know, he was there, he was under 30. And what was happening was science teachers were talking to their students, right? And they'd be like, yeah, so the earth is a globe. And all of a sudden hands would go up in the back, right? They're like, so my man, Kyrie, yeah, he makes like 15 million a year. He's got a shoe deal and he's got all sorts of other stuff. LeBron James is his best friend. What do you got, teach? Right? What cred do you have? And the, and, and the teachers would be like, oh, God, what do we do? And so the, he would get these letters from these high school teachers going, dude, you are killing me. It's like, it's like, I can't do anything as long as you keep saying that. And so he's like, look, I am sorry that you guys are going through this, but it is what it is. So yeah, celebrity, a big, big thing. Uh, but at the same time, there's all sorts of celebrities that uh, won't come out because of it. They're, they're still scared because uh, like there was a celebrity that was on a, a big TV show here who I met at an at a interview that I was doing down in Los Angeles. And he told me afterwards, he, he looks me straight in the eye. He goes, I was never here. And yeah. he, he walks down the stairs or, um, uh, you know, one of the highest paid television actors in, in the United States at one point, Kelsey Grammer, you know, went, went to his house, hung out with him, went to dinner with him. You know, we were talking about doing a television show. He could not get a distributor. He could shoot the television show. He had the money to produce the television show. He couldn't get it on a network. So he's like, look, I don't even want to, I, we can't even shoot this thing unless we know where it's going to go and I can't get it. And he had contacts. And so it's like, so he wasn't going to come out officially. He would have come out officially if the show was there, 
but he couldn't come out. Lots of celebrities. I mean, the ones I listed on there were just the ones that were willing to say things on camera or barely on camera. One day, Novak, by the way, I think probably after Novak will probably retire next year if we make it that far. And when he does, I'm I'm pretty confident he'll he'll mention something along those lines. Really? Thank you, by the way. You're, I, but I, I thank you. Of course, it makes sense because Melbourne, his absolute favorite place to play in the world. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he's won that tournament more than anything. And he's great. I, I love Novak. I wasn't really into tennis that much until he came along. He just kept mm -hmm. doing it, doing it. I don't think anyone's going to touch his record. I don't. I think I think mm -hmm. Alcaraz, he's young, but Novak, he was so consistent. That's true. But he had, I mean, he had to compete with Federer and Nadal. And I feel like the competition is not as strong now. So That's true. But the Russians, I, in Alcaraz's um, defense, the Russians and the and uh, the Finns, there's some young guys behind him. They're going to give him, I mean, he's been knocked out a few times. And he doesn't he still doesn't have the height. Yeah, he's got the speed. And he's a he's a great player, no question. Absolutely no question. I just think he's gonna he I think he'll probably end up the same way Nadal did, where Nadal fell to injury eventually. You know, he wore down. Uh, but we'll see. But yes, you're right. The competition isn't it's not the old, it's not that those glory days are gone, unfortunately, in tennis. But and and so it's gonna be sad when Novak leaves because he's the last of the uh, of the old guard. So yeah. I think that's all I had in terms of questions. Okay. Everything is there that... is there anything else you need? So what I'm gonna send you Asmund Gold, that was his name. Oh uh, he was in the um list of videos, the other list of videos that you sent. Oh, me. you saw him in there. Oh, okay. So yeah, that was the one where he was he did the poll. Okay, so you already saw I that. Didn't, I didn't a little bit. I just, I, oh, okay. I well, it, and he was a bit annoying. So then I clicked to the next one. Well, yeah, he's a gamer. Yeah, he's yeah. he's a professional American gamer. So I will. Well, I'll send you the link again because. But by the way, good memory that you would remember that he was on that list. Uh, I have seen him pop up before, so I, I remember the name. He has been doing gaming videos for basically his whole life, ever since he was in in high school. And um, he made enough money. He's consistent. His fan base is is solid, and to where he he doesn't have to work. He, that's just what he does. He streams his stuff, and he he'll never be able to spend the money that he that he makes because he's not flashy anyway. He lives in a rundown house in Texas, and he doesn't care. There's a lot of gamers I know that don't care about cars and hot tubs and fancy houses <laughs> and crap like that. They all they care about is gaming. It's like, do I have an expensive computer? Yeah, who cares. You know, their places are just a mess. Anyway, so I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you the link to Fake Famous, the documentary. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I think I'll also send you the link to uh, The Social Dilemma. Okay. Uh, I think you really get something out of that, which is how social media, what, where, why are, where we are now with social media and, and the guys that created it and kind of regret it. It's not, it's, I, mean, well, I mean, seriously, the, the, the combination of all the social media platforms has created sort of a Frankenstein to where, like you said, social media is now has taken over and it's irresistible. There's so there is a social media engine for every demographic that's out there. And so all the creators is like, oh crap, we didn't think it was gonna turn out like this. It's like, yeah, neither did Frankenstein. Um, the guy who wanted to turn off recommendations, I'll do that. I'll send you my flat earth numbers playlist. That's kind of fun. I'll see if I can find the do you care about the Senate hearing? Yes. Okay, I'll see if I can find that. I think I've got that line around. I've got a thousand videos on my channel though, so I don't know. If, I, I should be able to find it. Uh, I'll send you the link to Asmund Gold just so you can see the poll in real time. And then I'll send you a link to, are you going to see behind the curve or do you want me to send the link or do you care? Is it is it only on Netflix? No. I don't have All right. I will send you <laughs> the, I will send you the, I've got, I've got it on my machine. So I'll send, I'll just send you a hard copy of it. How's that? Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. And what's this other thing? Uh, I don't know what this is, but I'll yeah. So between those things, I'll uh, but I'll say it'll be a wee transfer link for behind the curve. I'll shoot that off right now as I'm building other stuff. All right. Is there other than that? Is there any other resources you can think of? Not at the moment. 
that. So yeah, this should be really exciting for what how big is your team for your this this project? Um it's me and three other students. Well, what are they doing? You're doing all the heavy lifting here. You're you're gonna have yeah. the they're international students, so I don't think they're going to be doing much. To oh be my honest. god! Yeah, yeah, this is going to be your show, which is going to be awesome. Actually, I'm, inter I'm interviewing David Weiss tomorrow. Oh, you are? Oh, you should have led with that. I would have bad mouthed him during half of this interview. That would have been awesome. No, David Weiss is great, and he will. I don't know what questions you have for him, but be ready. You've seen some of the stuff he's done, right? Yeah, I've actually watched quite a bit of your interviews as well as his oh okay okay well between yeah between the two of us yeah we we've got you covered he's done he does a lot of video stuff he'll he'll do a lot of nuts and bolts for you uh unless your questions are kind of like with with what we were doing in which case he may not i mean the focus of our article because i don't like i don't i don't think we're going to be able to write an article like talking about the whether we think it's Oh, no, and nor should you, nor should you. The, what's the point? There's so many videos out there that cover that. I mean, he's literally done a thousand interviews along those lines. So no, what your, the questions you had were great. I love the social media angle. Social media to me is, is fascinating because it's changed everything and it's still changing stuff to yeah. where I don't even know what the new, it's, everybody's got their own thing now. I mean, there's still people out there using MySpace, which is weird. I thought, I thought that died. It did, but there's still people. Was it? It's not offline, is it? I thought it was offline. Is it offline? Is it, is it still available? <laughs> Let me see. Well, oh, I mean, wow. I know. Well, it can't be completely offline. Like, I know people that still have their America Online accounts. I think it's still a thing. Yeah. Why would you kill it? I don't know. I know. You're probably saying it's so old. Why would you hold on to it? It's like, yeah, you're right. But remember, Twitter's. Twitter is now X. Hmm. And it was... Uh, actually, you know, but there are actually quite a lot of flat earth accounts on Twitter that have a pretty big following. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. There's, there's one in Japanese. I don't know if you know. No. A, I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link because I, I keep seeing it pop up. A Japanese... I think they're based in Taiwan, but all their posts are Japanese. What's he doing in Taiwan? I, don't, I have no idea. Little little Twitter trivia for you, since you're kind of a sports person. Do you know who the Boston Celtics are? Uh -huh. Okay, so the bird that was used for the icon of Twitter. Do you know what his name was? No. Larry. Larry okay. Bird. Uh -huh. Larry Bird, who was the iconic white basketball player that led the Boston Celtics to some of their championships in the 1980s. Cause the guy who created Twitter was a big Boston fan. Uh -huh. There you go. Uh -huh. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people's like the bird doesn't have a name. Absolutely. It does. His name was Larry. Can I email it to you or should I send it to you in the chat? No, 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 no. Email it to me. Email it to me. Okay. And then I'll, I'll, cause I, I gotta email you this thing anyway. I gotta, Put together these links, but I will send you behind the curve right now. What time is it? Yeah, I got time. I'll do it. All right, groovy. So now you get to go have dinner. No, Are it's you... only it's three fifty here. Yeah, it's close enough. <laughs> have have some, have a Vegemite sandwich. Have you had Vegemite before? No, <laughs> no, no. Actually, I did. I had a little spoon tip, and I hated it. It was awful. I don't get yeah, it. It's gross. I don't know what what the hell is wrong with Australian people. Apparently, you have to spread like a tiny, tiny bit with a lot of butter. Oh, yeah, like, that's how you're supposed to have it. Oh yeah, that makes sense because it's so concentrated. But so why have it at all? I don't know. I, I guess I like the taste of it. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. Okay, that's it. We're done, right? Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Oh yeah, no, it was it was absolutely my pleasure. If you need anything else, let me know. Have fun with. Are you doing David at about the same time tomorrow? At twelve. Oh well, twelve my time, so a bit earlier. Six. Is he in the same place? As no, you? he's east, east coast. So he would be. Um, he's three hours ahead of me. He doesn't oh. care though. So he's it would in, be around. Yeah, he's he's New York time. Oh okay. So.
Good guy. You'll you'll like you'll like talking to him. If there's anybody else, by the if there's anybody, I know you probably don't have time, but if there's anybody else in the community that you want to talk to, let me know, and I will. If there's someone, it's like you know who I'd really like to talk to is this person, and I'd be like, yeah, like probably I if I can't track them down directly, I know someone that can. Okay. <laughs> no, I have a question. Um. Nope. No more questions. Is there any big or like any conferences or anything similar happening in Australia anytime soon? Probably not. I wish. That that would be you know what I I I I will ask around. Um, uh, actually, believe it or not, the closest I got to you was a New Zealand conference. We have a, quite a few people in New Zealand, but not Australia. For some reason, I don't know why. That is kind of an odd thing. We do have, we do have some people in Australia, but not compared to. Ask David tomorrow. By the way, ask him to show show you Australia on his app. You know, with his dots. Have it. Actually, have it. I got it. <laughs> you are wonderful. I am so glad that you you are so up to speed that you have the app. Yeah, look look on the I'll look on the thing and see how many people are in Australia. In fact, you could message. You could do a, a little blast and and say, "Hey, who's out in Australia that's that's uh, willing to talk to me?" Like the only problem with Australia is it's so spread out. Found one guy from Melbourne. He actually has a book as well, like a novel. Oh, um, nice. I'm gonna talk to him, but yeah, I do think there isn't a really concentrated community. No, in no. Yeah. Australia is kind of funny that way. I mean, come on, the the population is just you know kind of mm -hmm. that. There that, isn't there isn't there like a kind of meme thing that flat earthers don't think Australia exists or something like that? No, no. And by the way, be careful when you bring that up to David. Because oh, really? he might lose it. Um, <laughs> the no, no, it is not. No, we of course we know Australia exists. I was there. I freaking filmed it. I know. That. I know but isn't I, I don't know. The, I feel but like what's what's interesting about Australia, which you should ask him about, is the time zones versus our time zones. It's not on the flat Earth map. It looks different. What what we've been finding out recently is the time zones are screwed up compared to us. We're about the same size, but we have four time zones. But you have two and sometimes two and a half. But when you have daylight savings, you have five. Actually, I I was because I joined a lot of flat earth Facebook groups. And yeah. I, I saw someone posting about that. They said that we have three time zones, whereas you guys have four. But no. then someone said that, no, we actually have four. There's a time zone that not many people know about between I think it was like South Australia. Well, yeah, and but it but it doesn't have anything to do with the sun. That's the weird part of it. You know, I'll, say, I'll see if I can send you a link. There's some wonderful stuff about this recently, about the time zone stuff. But ask him about that if you get a chance. You'll have some you'll have some fun with that one. But no, yes, of course we know Australia's there and we know we know, know there's some the, the problem the problem we have with the southern hemisphere is that if it started out as flat and you tried to make a globe around it, you mm -hmm. have to the the lines, the the um longitude lines get spread out like a bike spoke. And so you have to hide time zones in some places and expand time zones in other places. So like up in the north, you know, in the North Pole in the center where the spokes are, are dense, we've got the, the time zones are really weird. They should be pretty equal lines, 24 lines all the way around and not. And Australia, of course, it's the only thing that's out there that's that's of any width and so you guys are the, the likely culprit to where you have to most of the stuff is hidden in the oceans but australia is looking pretty weird so ask him about that tomorrow he'll do a fun video on it hopefully in fact ask him if you want to get ahead of it ask him shoot him an email beforehand and say hey while we're talking can you can you do you have any vids on the australian time zone difference okay. right okay i think he'd have fun with that all right i'm done I'm done. We're out of here because it's been two hours. All right. So uh, if, it, again, anything else comes up, I you'll get an email from me and I'll send you behind the curve in the next uh, 40 minutes.